when I tell you this is a day I will never, never forget, I don't know the last time I cried tears of joy until December 12th, 2021. There's a collective that I, I heard about in Atlanta and um, it's led by this young lady named Gloria Umana. And we've heard that they started a campaign to take the Hope Booth to a bunch of different city cities and it would take $50,000 to or $40,000 to do it. Well, on behalf of Transformation Church and the flow that started in crazy faith, we're sending you a check for $50,000 so that you can do everything and spread hope to the entire world. When he said the word hope booth, I said, this is not real. This isn't real. And suddenly my phone is just going off. Buzz, 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 text after text. Gloria, are you watching Transformation Church right now? Do you see what's happening? Oh my goodness, I think you're about to receive. I think the campaign's about to be covered. Text after text, DM after DM, calls, FaceTimes. And I'm like, guys, what's going on? What is happening right now? My legs were shaking like jello. I kid you not, I couldn't stand properly. I wanted to faint, tears were coming out of my eyes. I've never had tears of joy like that before. I couldn't believe it. I was legitimately shocked. Honestly, I could have never imagined it getting this far. Let's take it back to the beginning. Okay guys, so I just got back home. Today, I just wanna, I just wanna make sure that this is documented. Today is December the 12th, 2021. And this morning, the Hope Booth was blessed with a $50,000 check from Transformation Church. I just, I want to document this because I want people who feel as though they are forgotten to know that there is a creator that has them in mind, who is fighting on their behalf, even when it feels like he's not. Here's the thing. We had just started our 30 day campaign 12 days ago. And the first day of our campaign, we raised about 2000 or so dollars, which is pretty low for 24 hours in the campaign. Usually that's when you're gonna hit your highest is going to be in that first 24 hours, but we didn't hit pretty high, but we knew we had our um, official launch party coming. So that was our second opportunity to hit a pretty, pretty high number. And again, we didn't hit pretty high. And so in that time frame between our first opportunity to raise a high number and our second opportunity to raise a high number, we raised zero dollars. So when I saw the progress of where we were as far as our funding goal um, in between week two and week three, I was honestly really discouraged. I felt like we weren't gonna make it potentially. I started to doubt the mission, I started to doubt the vision. I felt like people didn't understand or didn't even really care, or so I thought. I started the Hope Booth because in 2020, I looked around and I saw a problem. As innovators, I think when we look around and see problems, naturally we find solutions. I noticed that the average person living on the streets goes three to six months without being looked in the eye. And I remember hearing that statistic and my heart was broken. I started to begin thinking to myself, what's the use of our art and our creativity if it doesn't impact the lives of those around us? And so I began thinking of innovative ways to create something that would help others feel seen, whether they live on the streets or whether they're a CEO of a Fortune 500. So I have chosen and dedicated my life to be a part of a movement where no one goes insane. And kind of what that looks like is seeing people in unconventional ways, choosing to not only see people in simple ways, but choosing to um, see people and offer hope in ways that people haven't gotten the chance to experience it. Um, I've been able to see how Hope Booth has transformed my life during the past year, and I'm excited to see what it can do for the others during the next 30 days. Once I found out what it was, I was immediately on board. 
Um, I'm really big on empathy in my work uh, as a filmmaker, and I feel like this is right in tune with that. Um, I'm really excited about getting out on the road and connecting with different people and bringing hope to people. To go 30 days to 20 cities is just unheard of. The way that we are able to see people through this and to give people hope, to give this world hope, which is really needed, is just so amazing to be a part of this. So we've all been to university and I think in university is like the that time period where you're trying to figure out who you are mm -hmm. and I think a lot of these people they still haven't figured it out they're still their identity is still wrapped into what they have what they can achieve what they don't have what they look like mm -hmm. and so this is a unique opportunity for us to bring hope to people that's lasting and eternal and beyond the superficial beyond like what I look like beyond what I can do beyond my achievements and performance and so I'm excited because I know in college what I felt like those were the days where I felt most invisible and so even though a lot of people knew my name and knew Gloria on campus like I still felt like I wasn't seen or known by anybody and so it's really special for us to be at a college university to be able to speak to the people who need to be spoken to most like who have the ability to actually pioneer this movement with us. Look, I get it. We can't always control what comes around the corner of life as we're walking. And sometimes the cards dealt leave us with heavy hands. But I want you to know, if you ran into something that knocked you to the floor, you are not invisible. That rock bottom is not the end, but the beginning of a rock climb. Whatever has you stuck in the pit where you currently sit, it doesn't make you less human than the day that you are born. You are more than able to escape the hole where life tried to bury you because you are still able to breathe. So pause. Breathe. And believe me when I say there is more on the other side of this moment. A place where your bounce back is patiently counting away the days until you realize new beginnings was always in you. And another thing. You are not alone in this. There are people rooting for your reset and committed to your ascension. Although, I'm pretty sure you could handle this all by yourself. I just thought you should know there are hands at your disposal if needed. Because this does not end where you currently stand. Where you are positioned is the genesis for something better. So, keep on pushing. Don't give up. And remember, if you didn't already hear this today, you matter. after experiencing the Hope Booth? Um, that was so what I needed in this time of life. Um, my mom um, committed suicide almost a year ago, um, and her name was Hope. Um, so like just seeing that, it just like brought her to life for me, and that's exactly what I needed, and exact, those words were exactly what I needed to hear today. Oh, I've been through some of the worst experiences anyone in their life at such a young age can go through. And all I know through and through is that God will drag you out even when you don't feel like it. We literally are pioneering a movement where no one goes unseen. This organization, this group in particular, not only does it make me feel seen, but it also pushes me to go and look at people in the eye, to encourage them, to affirm them, to let them know that God truly loves them and that they don't have to do life alone. The reason I joined the Hope Move Tour is to connect with other people who may feel like they've gone unseen. So it means a lot to me to be able to tell other people's stories through the lens. So joining the team as a filmmaker is something that I'm super inspired about. I love traveling, so getting to connect with other people and provide hope, inspiration, um, is something that I'm super passionate about. 
on our team we have this saying where we say it's bigger than the booth because it is ultimately like the booth is awesome and it's amazing but really the heartbeat behind it is that all of us would come together in unity and we would do the hard work of seeing others looking others in the eyes and dignifying others regardless of what stage of life they're in what they look like what they believe in or where they come from I guess the main thing is that everybody matters. I mean, is the main thing that, that, that teaches you off like that. And a moment that I shared with a couple of you, and I think Susie had shared about it, it was like, so we run the store and all our business is like a big family. So we really don't call it as a team. You're a family member of Asukad, and whether they're still with us, and we go, like in Miami, we just had a 10 year reunion. We had a bunch of people, like 40 of our members that have grown up, you know, Usually everybody starts young, 16, 17, sometimes their first jobs. Um, so that the fact that everybody matters and you go there reminded me of one of, the, one of our employees, one of my favorite ones that I had here young ago that we lost. So he was transitioning, he kind of went. One of my best employees here was happy, every single customer he would greet, but he was going through so much pain inside and obviously none of us knew that. And it's just great to see that something matters and hopefully had he maybe heard this beforehand or would have shared that to him, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to have that regret, but hopefully, you know, somebody would have reached out to him, said something, I know he has great parents, but hopefully if everybody can listen to this, maybe we'll make a big difference in, uh, in uh, humanity and, and in our community and you know, in our families. So on a journey of this magnitude, it is extremely important that we consistently check in and figure out what are the things that we can alter and adjust and what we're doing to make things more impactful, to see how people are, how they're doing in their heart, and then how we could further move in unity. We are here in the Los Angeles, California. You guys probably have heard a lot of things about this city. It's one of our favorites that we're excited to be here because this city has diversity. This city has people of all different groups and ethnicities. And we're just excited to bring hope to a place that has lost a lot of hope over the last few years. What is one thing that you heard that impacted you or you felt as if someone else needs to hear this? Um, you are who you're meant to be. Like, you know, my dad, I'm a filmmaker, so like my dad has been filming my life since three months before I was born up until I was seven. And like at five years old, he has me on camera saying I want to make movies. And so I literally am here making a movie now. Like as a creative, we get so lost in the forward motion. So being present and like, I've had a lot of moments recently where I had to be present to understand who I am and what I've been doing. So it gave me like a moment again like to recollect who I am and what I want to do and be present. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are afraid to just be allowed to live, be allowed to like, feel, like feeling like they have to have permission to live. And I've personally felt that before. And I feel like that's a very good thing to bring out that you don't need permission to live. You just move forward, I guess. Um, I almost cried. I think it was incredibly profound. Um, it really just kind of gives you that hope and that strength to like keep you going and inspire you. And like, I got chills like midway through. I was like, I needed this today. I'm like, I get too locked into my own mind sometime. And it's like, you just got to branch out and just see like how beautiful the world really is and that you are seen and you are heard and you are validated, you know? I think part of the experience is being able to escape from wherever we're, this booth is. You're standing in the middle of downtown Las Vegas and being able to clear your mind, open your heart, open your mind, and just receive the message that it has. Yeah, completely. That even with the busyness, I can still hear my own thoughts and like, what am I experiencing? You know, and like, no, I think with the booth, it's like, you know, there was the I am statement. It's important that you participate and immerse yourself fully and not just, okay, and I, I did it. Now say this with me. I am who I'm meant to be. I felt inspired for sure. I was feeling really down today. <sighs> I guess just more present, more relaxed, and just like tapped into just not my thoughts. 
we, we kind of put on a facade sometimes um, and we all just want to like show up in a certain way and so I think that the purpose is to show you that like everyone feels their own feelings and it's okay however that feels for us. And sometimes you gotta just take that moment just to remember, recuperate and be like, I'm me, I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah, it was beautiful just because, yeah, the present moment is, you know, all that exists at the end of the day. I'm a new mom and I think sometimes you feel really alone and so it's, uh, it's good to be reminded that that we all have um, each other and it's okay to be vulnerable. This is unexpectedly emotional. <laughs> I wasn't okay. expecting that. It is okay. It is <laughs> Going from city to city after city and seeing the impact that the Hope Booth had on such a wide array of people was truly something I'll never forget. It was amazing and incredible and powerful but I couldn't help but to think about how this all began, where we started just a couple months ago in London, England, debuting the Hope Booth for the first time ever. Going to London, it was so interesting because you had like kind of like the thrill of being in a different country, but then also the reality of like, no matter where you go, you're gonna run into people that need to know that they're worth it. You're gonna run into people that are still struggling financially, people that are still just looking for answers. Um, so that was really the mindset going in. And I think it was interesting going to London because as a writer, you know, starting out and with the prototype and everything and getting a chance to see people react to, you know, your work, it was really like satisfying and really fulfilling. The difference with this tour, um, knowing that, you know, People are hearing what I might have to say, but not just hearing my voice, but knowing that they're getting the hope that they may need in that moment. They're getting like that, uh, that positivity, that just the good energy that they need in that moment. And um, I may not have to be there. They may never know my name. Um, they may not even remember my face, but as long as they remember what I say, that's everything I need. The London team reuniting was so special. And I think at some point we had thought about this, like, oh, it would be really cool if we could have our original crew go on tour. But we knew that wasn't gonna happen because everyone had such different schedules. And the tour really happened quickly. Like the idea came about in basically October, November. Fundraising happened in December. January, February was planning, March, gone. Like, it was like that. And so we knew we weren't going to have our original crew, but we were like, all right, let's create a new crew, but let's hope that we can get that OG debut crew to show up at some point on the tour. After the experience in Hope Booth, how are you feeling? At the end, the quote, uh, I don't remember who it said it was by, but the quote, um, when it talked about not getting rid of like your stretch marks and your scars and your, you know, stuff like that. Um, we, good Lord, we live in a world of so much fabrication that it's unbelievable. I feel like everything has to be a, a presentation or a performance. And with that quote, it's like, you ain't got to, you know what I mean? And right. as an actor, even when we're performing, we're not performing. We're right. just test tubes right. for like the work that's being created and we just flow through authenticity, experiencing and experimenting with the human condition. So right. like, I don't know, I thought that quote was super, super dumb. Was there any point during the presentation or anything that really like compelled you to like change or made you think like, oh, I could do this better or, change this kind of thing? I think at the end, when, when the voice said, say along with me, I am who I am, I hesitated. Like, I didn't want to say it out loud, because like, I'm like, I'm a very quiet person. I don't like saying things out loud very much. Right, <laughs> it's like, right. made me think about how like, maybe I should do that more often. <laughs> like, one piece I always kind of come back to is uh, um, Still Hope. Um, writing that piece, um, it's meant to speak to those that may be struggling with depression. 
but the key is it's like identifying the kind of universal factors of depression because depression in one person's life may look different than depression in somebody else's life um, so finding different ways to like connect like some so many different diverse experiences into one moment um, that was challenging consider this birds are born with wings and even they have to gather the confidence to spread them i believe that for every time you feel alone there's a star out there in the cosmos staring back at earth hoping its light reaches your window dreaming of kissing you good morning and letting you know that things will be all right I believe that for every time you muster up the audacity to put yourself down, that there is a diamond under rock bottom somewhere, pressuring itself to be like you, hoping that one day it can compete with the glimmer of your retinas. I believe that somewhere on this planet, there is a coral reef whose colors wish they could be as vibrant as the symphony that is your breathing. Every breath bringing a crescendo. Every note being proof that you are a song worth listening to. I believe that it's proof that there is still hope. Hometown of Hope Booth, and it's gonna be the best experience of the entire tour. So we're excited. I'm pumped. All my friends and family is gonna come. He on three. One, two, three. He. I really needed that message. I feel uplifted. You know, I love the opening message. Um, you know, let go of all of the distractions, and I mean, you know, let go of all of the distractions and insecurities, and just be present in the moment. You know, I needed to hear that. It, it just makes confirms what I'm already trying to do. You know, just. Let the anxiety go. I really have very bad anxiety problems like this right here. It's making me nervous, you know? But it's just like, you know, why not? Let's do it. You know, who's judging? And if they are, who cares? I feel really just like light, you know? Like a weight has been lifted. Because I honestly I struggle with anxiety in law. And, and I'm actually Gloria's sister, so she's seen, yeah, a lot of that growing up. And so um, I didn't even know what to expect going into it. She told us a little bit about it, but I didn't really know, you know, what exactly it was. So listening to the words and like hearing what they had to say, like closing my eyes and just really focusing on the moment, like it really, it, it did something to me, you know? And I'm really, I feel really encouraged. What is one thing that you heard that impacted you or you felt like someone else in your life needs to hear this? I am who I'm meant to be. Oh my gosh, I need to say that a thousand times a day. I think um, I struggle with imposter syndrome. I always feel like maybe I'm in the wrong place, but reminding myself I, that I am who I'm meant to be is, it, it reminds me that wherever I am, wherever I go, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. It's crazy because I didn't realize how much I didn't want to like go to that place of vulnerability out in public. And even though the headphones give you the feeling that you're secluded and away from things, you still, I still was challenged by that a feeling. But immediately it was still pushing through and hitting my heart and I was like, oh, I do matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, no, that's yeah, really no, true. No, no. I think what you said is also powerful because like even in our workplaces or our friendships, like environments that we're in, we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't, don't want to go to that deep that. place. Yeah. Um, but we need it, right? But we need it. We need it every day, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's important. Um, one of the things that stood out to me was the acknowledgement that like even sometimes when you feel crushed and like you don't matter or you feel unseen, the, the feeling of feeling crushed or feeling like the weight of the world is on you means that you are an object that can and have force upon it. So you do exist. You are important. <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly throughout the tour taking this deep breath because I'm like, this really is happening. Like, what in the world? I remember it was in the first week of the tour. Um, Kiana and I were in the RV and I opened up in our email and I noticed an email from someone from Trillith. And I knew that maybe a lot of people on the team had no clue what Trillith even is to understand the magnitude 
of what I was about to tell them. And I remember thinking to myself, one, this doesn't make any sense. This is mind blowing. But two, the tour is planned. Like every day is so strict and so tight. Logistically, this is not going to be possible. And I knew that from the jump, but I was like, okay, well, if the team is willing to be flexible to make this happen, then let's do it. Let's make it happen by all means necessary because this is no regular ask. And so we adjusted our schedule, altered things, and we made Trillith our final tour stop after Miami. I'm a therapist. Mm -hmm. So I think of all the people that I meet or speak to on a daily basis who have anxiety, who have stress, who are feeling overcome with life every day. Mm -hmm. And so when I was listening to the words, anxiety, stress, pressure, I kept thinking, wow, I know so many people that deal with this all the time mm -hmm. and that they, they struggle. And so just that it's, it was something very strange. And I don't know if anybody said this to you guys. All of a sudden, I smelt flowers. Mm. Like it was like, like it opened me up. Um, after experiencing the booth, um, what part of the presentation really impacted you or made you feel or think about like somebody else that could really use this message? Sure, so I feel that in today's world we have a very high suicide rate mm. and it's devastating. Um, me, for example, I am a survivor of suicide, not myself, mm. but my father, right? Mm. Um, I think that depression rates are at its highest because we live in this world of constantly comparing ourselves, right? Because yes. maybe we don't blend in with what's on social media or what's being promoted. So I thought that the story of the chameleon was really beautiful because you can really visualize what that chameleon looks like, right? Right. But we're not always going to have the tools and resources to tackle the expectations of every single person, right, right? right? So if you're happy with your expectations of yourself and you realize what your worth is and that if someone doesn't has an inability to see that worth, it doesn't decrease your value. This is the 500th person to ever experience a Hope Booth while we are on the first Hope Booth tour. Ever. Just reminded, you know, my word for this week was remember. Just reminded us, you know, no, you are valuable. You are unique. You are, you know, an individual with purpose, you know. And 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 another thing that mm, that reminded me of was we lost our son to suicide. And for you guys to do that, it's just absolutely phenomenal because you don't know who you're touching at that moment, yeah. you know. Wow, um, now that the tour is over, I don't know, I feel like it's like a bittersweet feeling because I never thought I would have this opportunity in my life just to like make connections, um, have real relationship, give people hope. And then there's also a part of me that's like, wow, like what's gonna happen now? Just because my mind has been on like tour life and um, RV life. And so I'm just, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm happy, but I'm sad in the same way. Before we went on this tour, I think one of the main goals for me was to just listen to people's stories and expand my faith and hope. So throughout going through this tour and listening to people's stories, it was really like, wow, uh, so many people were impacted in different ways that it really spoke to me. Um, and it just challenged me to continue to spread the word uh, of the Hope Booth and what we're trying to accomplish. And then also just um, continue to do what I'm doing and try to be impactful to as many people as possible. It, it kind of sucks that it's over, but I'm definitely looking forward to what we do with the Hope Booth in the future. I felt amazing. Um, it's definitely been like a surreal journey, just knowing that we went from debuting the prototype in London, planning the tour in just a couple months, and then now we're at the end. And so like, now that it's been the end, I've just been thinking about those moments of meeting with Gloria and just planning it, figuring out all the logistics. Um, and I'm just like, wow, we're here and it's done. So I feel really great and I'm happy that we were able to pull this off in such a short amount of time um, and provide hope for all the people that we met. 
I feel excited to see like what else will come for Hope Booth um, after experiencing everything that happened on the tour, everyone that was impacted. I'm just excited to see what's next and to see how everything is uh, gonna go m moving forward. Part of me is like, you know, relieved to, you know, get some rest and, and relax for a little bit. But mostly, you know, I'm a, I'm a little sad because it's like, you know, we spent that month together with everyone else and uh, it's gonna be a little adjustment not going to the RV every day and not seeing everybody and everything. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and sad at the same time, but grateful, you know, we had that experience. Ooh, how do I feel now that the tour is over? Honestly, I think I'm overwhelmed more than anything. Last night we got to Atlanta and I got in my room, got in my bed and I started watching some of the recaps and just started crying and I'll probably cry again now because I'm just thinking about the fact that 30 days of bringing people true hope, like we really did that. This was months of so much energy, hard work, prayer, and just trying to figure out how are we gonna raise the money to do this thing. And I think like as a leader, you kind of struggle sometimes wondering, is this just a good idea or is this an impactful idea? And so to see 30 days later, that something that's been brewing for over a year now was actually impactful and changed people's lives. It was overwhelming, so now I'm just overwhelmed and emotional and can't believe it's over and I want to go back and do it again. Take this moment with you. Hold on to it. This hope is yours. <laughs> <laughs>